Now, so obviously, as we've mentioned numerous times, we have brain damage, and we like to continue buying Star Wars toys. Yes. Uh, we figured we'd run down our ten personal favorite Star Wars toys ever of all time. Period. I'm really excited about um, this. Let's just let's get into this. You like Bib Fortuna's. You want to get your bib out here? Yeah. So I actually collect Bib Fortuna's because he's just a weird, bizarre background character. You see him at the beginning of uh, Return of the Jedi. He's basically like Jabba the Hutt's like bouncer um, or bodyguard or sort of just like the major domo. Yeah, the skeevy guy you would catch at like at a strip club, being like, "How many of you are there?" Uh, this is a uh, 12 inch scale figure that they made a couple years I like ago. That you can hike his pants up all yeah, weird. That's super weird. I don't like that at all. You're always doing that. Yeah, You're always this like came, posing them all nasty. This came out in the 90s, um, and I like him a lot just because he's got this really awful face. He's just like, Ugh. can we get can we get a good shot of him right there? Like, Ugh, yeah. what are you doing? Real it's bad. just disgusting. Uh, obviously, you collect uh, Bib Fortunas. I collect Boba Fett's. Uh, this is one of my favorite toys ever. This was a like special edition uh, Hasbro figure that they said was the 300th figure ever. Fun fact. Totally isn't. They just kind of made that up. <laughs> really? Like, there were a bunch of arbitrary figures. Um, if you actually do the math, I forget. It's, I think it's way more than that. Yeah. Uh, but they have this little thing on the back where they're like, oh, here's the very first. It was the early bird special, uh, Luke Skywalker. But there's a whole thing, if, if you're familiar in the 70s, the missile launching Boba Fett never actually came out. So to celebrate this kind of momentous occasion and, uh, you know, charge idiots like me extra money for a fancy package, uh, they put this uh, figure out. And I keep it in the box because... Uh, Speaking of packaging, uh, fun fact about the new Rogue One toys, they are the first Star Wars toys to not feature other toys on the back of the box. This is really, like a... Really strange. It's so weird. That's like been a long time thing I've always yeah. loved about action figures. Um, uh, you saw us playing with the Rancor earlier in the show. This is the original Kenner Rancor that came out for Return of the Jedi. I did not have this growing up, but a friend did. Uh, eventually, I rebought it in college, but his arm broke off. I got him at a yard sale. And just recently, I got this guy on eBay. I love him a lot because uh, every time I show him to people, people tell me stories about how they had him as a kid and they used to shove Jawas in his mouth and stuff like that. I almost lost my He's really good at eating. There. Like, I, when the Lonely Island was on up at noon, I, we got to do a bit where we puppeteered this guy. So that was a really good time. Don't eat Snaggletooth, that's terrible. Yeah. Um, so Snaggletooth is a character who has like a weird, long, kind of sorted history as an action figure. Uh, this is the one from, I guess, 77, 78. Uh, they made this toy, and back then Star Wars toys were like three bucks or whatever, and you yeah. buy them from the Sears catalog. Uh, they made this guy, and people didn't buy him because they were like, he's smaller than the rest of them. So they were like, okay, we'll make a different one. And so they made this weird giant Snaggletooth who's like this blue dude who's like got like a full human-sized body and is like a whole bunch taller. And there's a bunch of like weird, you know, collector variations on them. Uh, more recently, Gentle Giant has started doing full-size replicas of the old Kenner toys. Yep. Uh, they've done almost the entire line. Uh, I think they might have actually done the entire line. But yeah, you got me this for my birthday last I year. I did, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it's, it's such so, a weird thing to give an adult man. It's such a bizarre toy. It's just also, I literally carry a photo of this guy in my wallet because yeah. it's funny. And whenever I'm like, there's an awkward silence, I'll just pull it out and be like... This is my son. He's in college right now. People are like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, Why would you say about that? that? You got to stop doing that. It's really funny to me. Super weird. Uh, I love Lego. I always have. Star Wars Lego have become one of my favorite things in the world. And I really love the ATST. So just recently for Rogue One, one of the cool things about that movie is it has ATSTs. It's got chicken walkers. They're back. So they built a brand new set, which is super cool. It shoots missiles. It comes with a bunch of little men. Does it open uh, up? And oh, it opens up. up. Look yeah, at that. So cool there's little things in there. Oh, yeah. there's a thermal detonator in there. I love this kit. I was, like, really sick one day, and I was kind of, like, bummed out and depressed about 2016 in general. And I, would, I went to Target, and I bought a bunch of, like, cold medicine. And while I was there, I just walked through the toy section like I do and will always do until I'm dead. Yeah. Uh, and I saw this new kit on sale. It was, like, 28 bucks. So I bought it, brought it home, built it, and I immediately felt better. Star Wars Lego are, are chicken soup for the hands. <laughs> chicken soup for the hands, you weird dude. Uh, so here's a really weird thing to own. Uh, I actually found this on somebody else's desk. I think this belonged to Anthony Gallegos. This was Anthony Gallegos, that's right. So you want to see something really just I gross? put that water in this here is, a very long time I ago. I washed it out. I washed it out. So it's, uh, <laughs> but this is Back to Tank Luke. This came out in around 2000, and this was one of the first like, are you gonna, deluxe big ones. Are you going to bubble it? Oh, it's so nasty. Yeah. I um, really think that that water originally was there from when Anthony worked here, which is like four years ago. Probably going to give me a staph infection. Yeah. But anyway, I love that it also, you can get the FX7 droid and just plug him in there, and he's just like... Yeah, he's great. Like, this is when they were straight up just out of ideas, and they were like, all right, we'll get the part where Mark Hamill's in a diaper hanging from a bungee cord. Yep. Uh, okay. On top of that, I really love the Star Wars Black Series Job of the Hutt. Uh, he's really drooly and gross. I put a little salacious crumb on his tail, and I had this pizza toy at my desk that I make him eat. It's so gross. I like that it just looks like a croissant. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. Yeah, and it's also cool. You don't really get to see this part on Jabba a lot. His back fat. I love this. This, yeah. is, this is awesome. Real, real floppy One dude. One of my favorites. Uh, so the older toys, I didn't really get into them until I started getting older myself because they weren't as cool as the you know new young ones or whatever. But uh, this is a classic kind of Empire Chewy, And then they sold separately this 3PO that you could explode and put in all these body parts and then give this weird like tote bag that goes on Chewie's back. I just love this Chewbacca because it is... Terrible expression on his face. 
It just looks like this kind of like like chocolate bear dude. <laughs> well, it's just like, what would you do if your friend was in parts in your backpack? Yeah. So you just you build build them back together. This is like a fun little action feature, and I just I don't I don't know. It's yep. just like a funny little little playset together. And I've showed off this one before. I really love this. Uh, in the '90s, uh, Lego partnered or Star Wars partnered with Micro Machines, and they made these little kits. Uh, this is just in a little R2, and he's great. But when you open them up, you actually get one of my favorite scenes from any Star Wars. So it's terrifying right here. Yeah. Uh, this is Jabba's palace. So Jabba's in there, his little throne. We got the skiff over here. We got his this tiny little rancor, which I just adore. Yeah. Um, cool little set. There's a so, trap tour that I that I glued shut. There's because... actually a straight up topless Twi'lek in here. Like, yeah. There's Ula's not wearing a top in this. Uh, they've got a bunch. They've got uh, you know the the torture droid. They got the Max Rebo band. The weirdest thing is there's this dude here who I've never seen before next to Malakili who just looks like kind of a. Just a generic Indian man. Yeah, there's just a painting of a generic weird Indian guy. He's just this weird dude hanging out here. Yeah. Uh, of course, you know, Micro Machine's fun and small and everything, but this wouldn't be a good proper list if we didn't bust this guy out. The classic Millennium Falcon. This is actually not the original one, but they use the same mold. Um, yep. It's supposed this to make great. a bunch of noises and stuff. I just like, this is a space truck. That's a space truck that is has like a... It's got a, you know, it's got the Dejerik table back here, which is like a space Xbox. Mm -hmm. It's just like a, it's just a giant fun playset. We, we were like, having like a rough week a couple weeks ago and Brandon Hunt came in and he gave us the uh, original uh, walkers and he gave us this thing. And it's yeah. just, it's so much fun. And I like never had this as a kid. I, I love Star Wars toys. So, yeah. It's just like, you can, you can have like... The, the worst day of your life and just look down and just see this impossibly weird little like robot alien puppet man sitting on your desk and you're like, all right, yeah. the, the universe isn't all that bad.